Hey, what's up you guys? Your girl Gigi here. Thank you for tuning back into my channel. We got a good old episode of Daily Squeeze. You know what that means. We got a lot of juicy topics we got to get into. There are a couple of basketball wives who are taking over my feed right now. Woke up and I guess basketball wives is back on everybody's brain. Uh, thanks to a couple of ladies. And you know when basketball wives starts getting on the feed, it's never anything good. And then towards the end, you know, your girl... I feel like I just got a lot of shit. I just got to get off my chest. I decided, uh, you know, I guess I just woke up on the right side of the bed today to start voicing my opinion. And I typically don't get really into the political stuff because I don't have the energy nor the time to start arguing back and forth with you ignorant as people who don't want to wake up and smell the roses and smell the daisies and understand that this is 2020 and we are no longer laying down and taking your shit, okay? Um, but like I said, today I have the time and the energy and I feel like I got, you know, the stuff I want to get off my chest about all these companies who now all of a sudden want to jump for joy and be with the cause and stuff like that. I ain't buying it and neither are a lot of other people and we are constantly calling out the BS because we're not going to sit here and just listen to your words anymore. We want action. We're going to call you out for your BS point blank period. And speaking of getting called out for BS, let's get into the first topic of juiciness to discuss today. So let's talk about good old Shawnee O'Neal because she's getting called out. She's getting a lot of flack and backlash um, because of her recent Instagram post. So if you haven't seen good old Shawnee O'Neal made an Instagram post trying to be the new pillar of positivity and light. Um, basically discussing how she um, understands how black women haven't been heard. They haven't had a voice and she no longer wants that. She wants people to be positive and no longer criticize and be you know, demeaning to black women. And after reading the post, a lot of people were like, girl, girl, Shawnee O'Neal, Vashandia, girl, do you think you really had a position to be talking about this? You made all your money out of black people or black women fighting each other uh, on TV. That's how you made your coin, honey boo boo. So now all of a sudden we're, all, we're a pillar for positivity and light and not degrading black women and hearing their voices like this is where we're at now this is what we're doing so of course people were commenting below like bitch you ain't got no room to talk like what are you trying to do all of a sudden oh let's tag all the women and you know spread positivity and we're gonna be there to lift people up and hear their voices did you say that to og because you sure didn't want to hear her voice during the whole season of basketball wives nor at the reunion after you and evelyn got called out because evelyn's ass is next best believe it because she on the uh my little Twitter feed too, but we're going to get into that bitch next. But as of right now, Vashandia, we need you to understand you have no room to talk because you made all of your coin stirring the pot and watching your little minions, uh, Evelyn in Malaysia, go after OG because one, they felt she was ugly, two, didn't fit in with the crowd, and three, y'all didn't like the fact that she stood up for herself. This was a good old strong blackity black woman from the motherlands, from, uh, where is she from? Nigeria, Africa. And y'all didn't like it, especially Evan. And Vashandia, you completely always had excuses for Evelyn when she started acting out of line, jumping over tables, throwing bottles. You always have an excuse for her. But the minute OG got any type of angry, she was, oh, she's a problem. She's the angry black woman. Why is she so aggressive? That's what you had, Vashandia. So now you need to explain what's the difference between the two because we see it, which is why your ass got called out, you know, for looking like a little colorism here. And then you want to talk about voices and then we get to the reunion and it comes time for your little half-assed segment for, you know, addressing the colorism that OG was saying and you didn't even really address it. You did not take ownership of what you said, what you did and the way you stirred the pot between Evelyn Malaysia and OG. You didn't address that. You quite simply glazed over it. And how are you going to have a, a conversation about colorism and not have the bitch there who the problem is about? Girl, you really didn't want to get into it. So that's why your ass had to choose between being a castmate and EP. But don't worry, VH1 made that choice for you. Um, but this is what goes to show, like, we are calling out everybody who wants to be, all of a sudden you want to be on this side of the fence, and then when it's time for a cause, you want to jump on that side of the fence. Like, you can't do it. Pick a side, bitch. We ain't going to be straddling this line, okay? You can't say, oh, you want black women to uplift each other and be there for and make sure we hear their voices and then be making money off the back of them acting ape shit, jumping over tables and constantly dragging bitches at any second of the day. That's how you made your coin, Vashandia. Do you not remember the past eight, nine, ten seasons of that? 
and you just because your hands weren't necessarily in it which is what she likes to do you know stay in the background in the shadows put her little comments here and there sprinkle it in but she sends her little minions like i said evelyn in malaysia and occasionally jackie and you want to say oh my, my hands are clean i didn't do nothing you know i'm there for black women i'll lift them up and praise them but bitch you really didn't okay so Vershandia, yeah, she's getting called out. If you haven't seen the comments, y'all better go on her. Actually, she, dis she disabled her page because people was flooding her shit bad. You just can't do it, Rashad. We're not going to sit here and take the BS. You know, all of you celebrities and, you know, reality TV stars want to look good, be down for the cause and stuff like that. But the minute y'all start making money, you forget who put the money in your pockets. Period. Point blank, period, poo. Ugh. On to the next Basketball Wives. Let's talk about her, Evelyn Lozada. Evelyn Hosada, whichever one you want to choose to be for the day. So now her man, if you haven't heard, uh, her ex, Carl Crawford, his ass got locked up, apparently, or got arrested. No, he got locked up, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he did. He got arrested. Um, he uh, currently is in a, a domestic abuse case because his girlfriend currently that he's with, they got into a fight, and she is accusing him of throwing her on the ground, dragging her, and choking her and of course call crawl uh, carl crawford that's hard to say back back to back carl crawford um of course he wants to you know claim his innocence and he didn't do nothing but why all of a sudden is El evelyn lazada coming to his rescue she wants to make a video um if i can find the link i'll put it in here but she basically just said you know I don't want to be a part of this. You know, she feels like her story is getting twisted inside of it. And, you know, she doesn't want what went on with her to turn into a whole situation that's not true. Because she said she tried her best to stay out of it. But, of course, anything that has to do with her exes, Evelyn immediately is going to be, and you know, uh, attached to it because that's her baby's father. And she's like, I wanted to stay out of it. But, you know, I have my son. I have to think about him. And I just need to let you guys know, and she put out there, oh, you know, when I was with Carl, he was never abusive to me. He was never mentally abusive to me. He never, you know, demeans me. And not that I want to invalidate, you know, her experiences. I just had to let you guys know I was never abused. Yes, Evelyn, here you are trying to not invalidate what that girl is saying, but that you're completely doing the opposite. Anytime you come out and say my experiences, it was not what the other person is claiming, immediately people are going to doubt which is why we had the situation with terry cruz and gabrielle union gabrielle talked about how this was not a good environment for her she experienced what she experienced and then we, here we got terry cruz the house nigga talking about how oh agt's been good to him he never experienced any of that so then it it invalidated what gabrielle union was going through okay he wants to go over there and be like eyes yes boss the master i'm here for you i didn't experience that master that's he trying to keep his coin in his pocket. No problem. You do you. Keep your coin. But in the process, don't fuck over another black woman who said that was her experience, which is what Terry did. That's another topic. But Evelyn, and then in the end of the video, she's like, oh, I know how the best, of, you know, from the best of it, how it is to feel like nobody believes you and they're twisting your story and they don't want to, you know, believe, you know, how you're going through domestic abuse and stuff like that. And then she try to tag her little foundation about evelyn lozada you know whatever people who feel like they're in a uh, domestic you know situations but evelyn you should have did exactly what you said you were doing in the beginning which was keep your damn mouth shut okay i get that you have a son with this man but how about carl crawford should have thought about that before he put his hands on that woman okay that's what should have happened you are not responsible for fixing his situation just because that's your baby's father because if it does come out that he was beating that woman and she has proof you're gonna look stupid as okay you're gonna look dumb as hell you constantly going after these men who treat you like shit and you want to be you know turn the whole into a housewife situation but you never get wiped up <laughs> it's just true tea you always get the ring but you never become the wife i mean but then you do but then you really even though you did marry chad ochocinco i mean were you really his wife i mean on paper you were but he still treated you you know like his side piece so what you defending this man for you were with him for four years and he was cheating for all of them like clearly you have a type 
But Evelyn, you just gotta understand, like that girl is, she said that even Carl apparently had a gun. He let the gun sing up in that house, like sent off some shots. And then he sent her threatening text messages about how, oh, that wasn't a beat down. You're just mad because I found proof of you with another man. And typically men who are in powerful positions like this, they like to be the one to call the shots. And if the relationship is over, they got to be the one to end it. And if this woman was trying to move on and did find her another man or whatever and knew Carl was cheating, she could have found out that Carl was cheating, had a woman on the side and decided, well, nigga, if you're going to do that, I'm going to get my own little play on the side. She could have did that too. But it still doesn't justify him possibly, you know, being abusive to her. Let me say allegedly, okay? I ain't got time. No, don't put me no legal situation. So allegedly, allegedly, allegedly i'm saying it but like i said evelyn you should have kept your mouth shut because now people are coming after you and now you're kind of looking like a hypocrite because as much as you're saying oh you know i i'm not gonna never tell somebody their experience didn't happen because i know what it feels like and then you 10 seconds later like well i never got beat up by him what do you think that's going to put out there if you say oh he never was abusive to me people are gonna start looking at her well if he didn't beat up evelyn like how could he beat her up like that's you know that's the thought process. So now you and Shiny got everybody on his back. Um, and you should have just kept your damn mouth shut. Period. Pooh. End of story. End of discussion. Y'all drop it on the comments and tell me how you feel about Shiny um posting, you know, that Instagram about how black women, you know, voices should be heard and we're not gonna be critical and criticize. We're only gonna lift up. Um, and then as far as Evelyn goes, do y'all think she was right for discussing or making a video about Carl Crawford and talking about her experiences granted yes she has a baby with this man but it's not your responsibility to sit there and try to make him look good to the public that's not your job woman because he made you look stupid what you trying to make him look good for that man dogged you out and embarrassed you okay and your son no matter what the situation is he's gonna grow up and that's going to be tabloids when he googles his father's name when he's old enough that stuff is gonna pop up regardless of you saying anything about in defense of him and in that situation that should have been left up for the dad to come to him and tell him the truth about what happened or explain to him you know whether like what went down with the woman you know for him he, that's for him to do like if he's going to be the dad he's in that situation you should just call carl and say look come talk to junior about this situation be a man because he has to raise that boy to be a man period okay so now let's move on to the end. Let's get into my rant because I'm kind of, where do I want to start with this? So obviously we know in the wake of George Floyd, you know, passing away, everybody in the country, in the world, uh, mostly everybody, 85, 90% of the world can see how fucked up this, this situation is. And we have those few like Drew Brees, and Laura Ingram and Donald Trump and all of these, you know, people who want to say this is all BS. And then we have the few businesses and the few corporations and sports industries, aka the NFL, who now want to come out and say we're down for black people. We we see the racial injustice and we want to stand for you, but People are calling out everybody who just wants to speak. You only want to make shit sound good. You want to put your words out there, but we are looking for action, okay? We want you to put the money where the mouth is, NFL. If you say you are down for the cause and you believe that there is racial inequality and you no longer want to see this continue, how about you pull your money out of all these politicians' pockets? That's what you're supposed to do, okay? We, I can absolutely commends we see um serena williams uh husband he left reddit in hopes of being re replaced by a black woman because there needs to be diversity in these huge co in these corporations many times we see they always put a white male or female at the face of the company because most companies don't want it to seem like if there is typically a black person up front people run the other way because we've been We've been deemed with this stigma of being aggressive, mean, not people friendly, and we probably are more qualified for the job than half of the white people in the situation. But because of the color of our skin, we don't get promoted, we don't get the right jobs, 
we're looked at as we're incapable and we very much are capable but it's just annoying the fact that we've gotten to this point in 2020 where we're still trying to fight to explain to people what the hell Colin Kaepernick was kneeling for you literally saw an eight minute video of why that man was kneeling on the ground and then you got Drew Brees who wanted to make it about the god dang flag nobody talked about the damn flag White people, especially the ones who want to, you know, turn a blind eye to every situation. You guys love to twist a situation and fit it to the narrative that you want it to be. And Donald Trump was very good at turning it into, oh, they're disrespecting the national anthem and all the veterans and the flag and what that represents. Drew Brees, you get to look at that flag and see all the exciting things and the privilege and the fact that your granddad fought for this country. Black people have grandparents fight for this country too the problem was when we came home back from fighting we were still three-fifths of a human being we still had to you know go talk to massa for leftover scraps that's what that flag represents to us and now you want to claim oh uh you know i i i miss i misspoke and i misunderstood and i wasn't educated enough no that's no longer excuse anymore not being educated on the situation is no longer excuse to me because you have all the means to you have all the money google books everything to know what we are talking about period all you people who have the money in this industry and you know the black people who get rich and then want to forget that oh we put you there like all you artists or celebrities like y'all wouldn't have none of that money unless it was for us supporting you now here it is we got kanye now want to be down for the cause i'm glad you're donating to you know the brianna fund and George Floyd's daughter's college fund. But nigga, you had the opportunity to sit in front of Donald Trump and roast his ass and actually get him and talk about certain stuff that was happening in this country. And you publicized a whole goddamn talk with this man and talked about fuck all. You talked about how freaking Yeezy made all this money and how like it was just so freaking stupid. And you gave that man so much publicity that he didn't need. And now here we are celebrities want to be here for us when we've been asking y'all to use your voice for a long time and this is what we get now just a whole we don't want just your voice we want your access we want your privilege we want for you to use all your opportunities that we afforded you spending our damn broke ass money on y'all heifers we bear we pinching pennies over here and yet we find a way to scrap for the little bit of enjoyment from music and, and movies or whatever to support y'all and the least y'all can do the least y'all can do is come back here and stand up for us so we don't have these situations with george floyd now as for people who want to sit there and say oh you know this is racism you know, why are we still having discussion that happened 400 years ago? Racism never went away. Let's keep it real. Racism just transformed itself into a whole new system, which is jail, which is, you know, the police system, how that works. And prison now is basically modern day slavery. That's what that is. They get their little purse cents a day for these companies. If you haven't seen 13th, the documentary on Netflix, go watch that shit. It will literally piss you all the way off because you are thinking, oh my gosh, like, like this is really happening. People, 2020, this is 2020. It's supposed to be the year of perfect vision and everybody else is seeing stuff. They got their glasses on is looking. So we need all of you other onlookers who want to sit there and say all lives, all lives matter and turn Black Lives Matter into an anti-white movement or to an anti-police movement. Like, y'all love turning this structure that we have built into protecting us and, you know, and considering our lives into something against y'all, which is not what it is. Yes, all lives matter, but bitch, all lives ain't the one right now that's dying at a, at a deadly rate. That's not what's happening. It's Black people dying at a deadly rate. We sit there and that's why it's a problem when Trina sits there and say, oh, I don't, I don't have nothing to worry about. I got my license and registration insurance. Bitch, it don't matter if you got all that stuff because Sandra Bland had it and look, dead. So miss me with that. You ca calling people animals and stuff like that. We don't want words no more. We want action. I can appreciate, you know, Bezos from Amazon. He's blasting people who are emailing him about how he's supporting the cause and stuff like that. That's what we need to do. Start shining lights on people who want to sit there and hide in the shadows because like um david banner said 
roaches don't scatter unless the lights are, are blasted on them okay they don't move until the lights get turned on so it's now time for all of us all of, when has it ever been a global situation we've had a lot of deaths in this country due to police brutality but nothing to this magnitude where it is global where everybody is seen damn this country is messed up and trump is only he's only what's the word? reinforcing you know, the people in the KKK and these racist ass white people and people like Tommy Lauren, that bitch needs to get god dang slapped in the face because here it is. She wants to criticize the looters and the protesters and they're two totally separate things. You're not going to sit there and connect people who are protesting peacefully and people who are looting and taking advantage of this situation and try to band them together to fit your narrative. That's not how this shit works. Okay, y'all got all these names for us black people when we do stuff, but where are the names for the white people out there who are committing mass murders? We have yet to see, I can't name one black person or person of color who went out there and did a, a mass school shooting. All of them have been white people. But where are the names for them? Where are the thugs and, the, you know, the criminals and all the extra names for them? Y'all got time to find sympathy for the white people who going to shoot up schools? Oh, he was being bullied. He had a hard life growing up. And he's, you know, going through so much grief. But where's where's our room for grief? We sit here and we are grieving as a country. We That's why there's all those different stages of grief. And anger is one of them. And y'all sit there and expect us to sit there and take police talking to us any kind of way, pushing 75 year old men over to the point where they bleed through their ears and y'all can find everything wrong with us, the protesters, and sit there and call everything we're doing wrong. But why is there nothing wrong when the police are out there running their cars through peaceful protests and jacking their horses up to run over people and sending out rubber bullets and fraction people's skulls and, t and sending out tear gas to the point where a 10 year old is got dang crying for her her life because the shit burns so bad where is the criticism for them y'all it sends me into a tailspin half the time that's why i gotta you know deprogram for the internet every now and then but i am proud to say that you know i'm seeing a lot of uh, you know, you little white millennials, y'all been coming through for some niggas, okay? I've been seeing a lot of you little young white kids who are definitely want to be educated and want to be, you know, actually with the cause and are standing up for us. Like, I appreciate that shit. I really do. The only thing left to do is to sit there and stand up for, you know, LGBT. As much as you don't have to agree with their lifestyle, you don't have to, but God dang respect them as a human being. All we are asking for is common human decency and respect we're not telling you that you have to go and dress up and drag with them or you know be over there and start making out with them like we're not asking for that they're just asking for basic respect and you know it's sad because you know i did hear about the the um the young transgender lady who got freaking jumped in like a gas station or something like that but all those black people and i'm just like damn how are you gonna sit there and talk about oh you know, we want to care for our life and stuff like that and then go do that to somebody. Like, sometimes black people, we can be our own worst enemy. And it's just unfortunate that us too, like, if we're going to talk about, you know, defending the black community, it's got to be as a whole. And that includes, you know, gay black people and transgender black people as well. Um, because they die at a high rate as well. So it's just a lot that's so fucked up in this country you know it's always all oh, the american dream people come over from overseas and you know it's you know i can make so much money over here but under all that american dream is nightmare for a lot of other people in this country unless you got money and that good old white porcelain skin it's gonna be hard for you because down here you know we're caught all the issues but we're still ignoring the fact that we got a rapist as our president. It has came out that he has been paying for these little girls as young as 13 years old, still to this day. That's a rapist. And y'all, and even if you don't agree with the fact that it's race, a lot of you people got kids that voted for this man. And that man is a rapist. He's a pedophile and was a part of the, the Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking of those little girls and stuff like that. But that's y'all's president. Y'all are okay with it because he's white. The shit is confusing. Actions, bad actions have no color, period. If something is wrong, it is wrong all the way across the board. So now at this point, I'm just simply asking, 
where do we go from here? Where are, what are we asking for in particular? Like, we need to drop down in the comments any petitions or anything like that. If there's any information that you guys have, you know, put down the down at the bottom uh, for everybody to see. If there's any petitions that need to be signed, any foundations, you know, that can be donated to. Um, I just want to really just have this conversation down in the comments of like what can be done for the future because we got to get these crack ass crackers out of the goddamn power. Okay, it needs to be people of color. It needs to be women. It just needs to be something else besides this flood of white people in this goddamn control in this country. And y'all are scared. I get it. Y'all are scared that things are changing. But guess what? We ain't going away. We can talk about this issue tomorrow, next week, next month, or next year. Okay? It's not going away so you can get with the program now. Or we can discuss it any other time. Because at the end of the day, if you haven't noticed, we've been through 400 years of this shit. And we can go through 400 more because we are built through this shit. Okay? We are built for this. So, you want to get on board or not? Period, poo. That's been this episode of Daily Squeeze. Okay? <laughs> I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Drop down in the comments. Tell me what you thought about, you know, the, the topics we discussed earlier. You know, uh, Shawnee O'Neal, Vashandia, and Evelyn, Hosada. Um, and I know I went on a little rant at the end there, but it's just so much stuff that this country does that is just sickening. And I'm tired of it. And all of you people who want to be in these big corporations and foundations and say you're down for the cause and you want to write your little notes out to the public and stuff like that, that's not what we want. We want cash money pulled out of these motherfuckers' pockets. I just, there's a list that just came out about all these restaurants who just sent hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Trump Foundation for him to be reelected. It's stuff like that that we need to find out. So we know that's where we need to pull our money from. If we got to stop eating it at goddamn Pizza Hut, Wendy's, and Burger King to get our shit across, then that's what we got to do. We can't half-ass this stuff. We got to be committed all the way, okay? And that's just what it is. And then, like, oh, Lord, I could go. I'm going to go off for another 10 minutes. I'm not going to. This video is already almost as long. All right, but yeah, I appreciate you guys, you know, for tuning in. Drop down in the comments for everything I discussed today um i'm welcome to any conversations anybody tell me what's going on uh in all these other states how the protests are going uh if there is any you know legal you know headway that's being made in any other states y'all drop in the comments and let me know i appreciate all of you guys for tuning in before you go make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel uh and i'll talk to all you hoes later okay Deuces.